Okay, the rule of sum, 2.4. The rule of sum states that if one mutually exclusive event can occur in m ways and a second can occur in n ways, then one or the other can occur in m plus n ways. So, let's look at if two events are not mutually exclusive, then the principle of inclusion and exclusion needs to be considered. That is, n, the number of a or b is equal to the number of a plus the number of b minus the number of a and b. Now sometimes, to reduce calculations, consider using the indirect method, which involves subtracting the unwanted event from the total number of outcomes in the sample space. So for example, if I want a certain number of a certain uh, event, I take the number in the sample space and I subtract it from the number of the comp... Okay, so one more time. The number of a certain sample is equal to the num number of a certain outcome or event is equal to the number of the sample space minus the number of the complement. And we'll see examples of this so that you can understand that sometimes it's actually easier to use this than it is to calculate the information. So let's look at the first example. At an international conference, either seven, eight, or nine countries may attend. In how many different arrangements could the country's flags be flown? Well, we know that if seven countries attend, you can have seven factorial positions. We know that if eight countries attend, it will be eight factorial. And nine countries attend, it's nine factorial. So really what we have here is we have basically m plus n ways. So we have the number of events of a plus the number of events of b, and we add them together. Now, we also have to, so when we calculate 7 factorial plus 8 factorial plus 9 factorial, we have 40, 408,240 different ways we could fly the flags. Now, remember, it's 7, 8, or 9, and none of them have a repeat of each other. For example, if we will not have, if 7 countries attend, we will not have eight countries. And if eight countries attend, we will not have nine. So we don't have to worry about this part of the ex exclusion. We're actually doing an example of where it's mutually exclusive. So it's m plus n ways. All right, let's look at another example. Example two, three players each cut one chord card from a standard deck. If order is important, in how many ways could they be all hearts, all aces, all aces, or hearts? So this is going to be very important to understand. Order is important, meaning that you take out a heart, the next one you take a heart, and the next one you take a heart. So we definitely do not replace these. Well, that means that we have a total of 13 hearts in a standard deck of cards, and we want to choose all of them to be three hearts, all of them to be hearts. Well, it's 13 choose 3, which means our answer, if we convert it to factorial form, will be 13 factorial over 10 factorial, which equals 1,716. So there are 1,716 ways you could have all hearts. Next, we go to all aces. Well, we have four aces, and we want to choose three of them to be aces. <coughs> Sorry, folks. So what does that mean? Well, that means that we have 4 factorial over 1 factorial. The reason why it's 1 factorial, it's 4 minus 3. And the result is 24. So there are only 24 possible ways that we could have a all aces. Now, all aces or hearts, this one's tricky because you could have an ace and a heart. So we have to include 4, choose 3. That's all aces. Four, 
13 choose 3 for hearts, and we have to subtract the one that's common. How many are common? That's right, one card that is common. One card that's common in both aces and hearts. So if you really wanted to call it, it would be one factorial of one P one, one choose one. And the answer to this is going to be 1,739 possible ways we could have ale, aces, or hearts. <coughs> okay, next example. Example three, the 10 members of a basketball team are lining up for their medals after a tournament. In how many ways can this be done? If there is no restriction, if the captain and assistant must be together, and finally, if the captain and assistant captain must not be together. So we have three cases of where we have to understand. So there's no restrictions means we're looking at example of where there's 10 factorial ways of putting people in in the line to get their medals because of that we have three six two eight eight zero zero three million six hundred twenty eight thousand eight hundred possible ways now if the captain and the assistant captain must be together so this is like the one with the joseph boyden books we need to know that these two can be together. So they count as one block. It doesn't matter what order they're in. So we know that we have nine possible places times two factorial. Nine factorial times two factorial. And we get an answer of 725760. Now, before we move forwards with the next example, I want you to understand about the captain and assistant. So I'm going to put 10 members on here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now, if it's no restrictions, it would be 10 times 9 times 8 times 7. So that's the 10 factorial. Here, <coughs> we, have to be, we have to be careful. Because the captain and assistant must be together. So if it's, essentially, we're taking two spots and we're saying they have to be joined. Does it matter where we put them? Not really, because I could put them here. I can put them in the middle. I can put them at the end. I can put them over here. It really doesn't matter where I put them. So for simplicity's sake, I'm going to put them here. This counts as one position, one out of the total sets of positions. How many different positions we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's where the 9 factorial comes in. Times 2 factorial because the assistant and captain could be in different orders. The captain could be here, the assistant over here, or vice versa. So the idea is that that's why we multiply by 2 factorial. Now, let's erase that and look at the last one, part C. Part C asks the following. If the captain and assistant captain must not be together... What does that mean? Well, that means that we can't have them together. Well, what's the opposite of can't? Can. So, I know where, it, where they can must be together. So, if they must not be together means that, oh, that's right. It is taking the answer we got in A, which is the total possible ways, subtracting the answer we got in B, so it's like the complement, like we talked about earlier, the complement, and that will result in our answer for C. So all we take is this 3 million number and subtract 725,000 number, and we get our answer. And I'm going to leave that to you. I'm pretty sure you could figure this one out. All right, moving on. One more example, folks. Example number four. In how many ways could the letters in the word factor be arranged so that the vowels are not together. So, now remember, what are vowels? So I'm going to get you to understand this for a second, just so that you understand what that requires. So one more time. In how many ways could the letters in the word factor be arranged so that the vowels are not together? What's a vowel? Okay, hopefully you're thinking A-E-I-O-U. There are two vowels right here at A and at O. 
All right, so we know the word factor has six spots. Any one of those spots could be filled by a letter. F-A-C-T-O-R, F-A-C-T, whatever we fill here, we can't fill in the other slots. But especially, we can't have two vowels together. So essentially, it's like grabbing two of them and say, okay, you guys cannot be together. Well, if you can't be together, what that means is we could calculate the complement, and then once we calculate the complement, we can it will give us when they can't be together. So the complement of can't is can, so must be together. Well, in this case, to be must be together, there is one, two, three, four, five positions, five. So six factorial is what we start with. That's the total number of letters minus five factorial. All right. And we s uh, minus five factorial times two factorial. Why are we doing this? This is the complement. Remember, the complement is five factorial times two factorial. This is the part that can be together. So this is the vowels that can be together. And we subtract it from the no restrictions one, which is six factorial. And that will give us how many possible ways factor can be rearranged so that the vowels are not together. And that is 480 different ways they can be rearranged so that the vowels are not together. All right, folks, that's the end of that video. Have a numerical day.